Welcome to the fourth installment in a series of tutorials focused on constructing simple logic gate programs using nothing but your Arduino, the serial monitor, and some code. This video will demonstrate how one can construct a simple Arduino program that simulates the behavior of the OR gate. If you haven't worked through the previous video in this series about how to implement an AND gate, then I would encourage you to go check that video out now. To get started, in order to implement an OR gate in software, the first thing we need, or the most important thing we need, is the behavioral rule or definition associated with the behavior of OR gates. And in this context, we're talking about inclusive OR gates. That is, OR gates that are true in all cases except one. There will be a later video about exclusive OR gates that are only true if one of two options is true, but that's for a later video. Focusing now on the truth table or the input output table for inclusive OR gates, the way these gates behave is whenever both of its inputs are false, the output of the OR gate is false. In all other cases, its output is true. If its first input is true, its second input is true, well, then the output's true. If its first input is true, its second output is false, then its output's true. If its first input is false, its second input is true, then its output's true. The only case where the OR gate will give a false as its output is when both of its inputs are false. That's in terms of truth and falsity anyway. If you would prefer, you can think about it in terms of ones and zeros. The way it works, the behavioral rule still holds. The only time that an OR gate will output a zero or a low voltage or a voltage lower than the medium voltage is whenever both of its inputs are zero. In all other cases, if one of its inputs is a 1, or both of its inputs are 1's, then the OR gate's output will be 1's. So, in our effort to develop just a simple behavioral rule, because remember we've got to turn this into a test that we can use like an IF test to implement it in software, all we need to do is focus on that last row in both of the, in that input output table or in the truth table. And the way we might summarize what that last row is saying that's, that lends itself to implementation in terms of an if test is something like an OR gate's output is false whenever both of its inputs are false. Otherwise, its output is true. And we can take that one sentence and turn that into an if test and have ourselves a functioning OR gate program. To do so, we can update the design and program sketch that appeared in the previous video about implementing an AND gate in Arduino software. I've already made the changes in this. We're still going to welcome the user to the program, display any special instructions. We're still going to have to collect user inputs times two via the serial monitor. We're still going to have to have a test that captures, but in this case, the behavioral rule associated with OR gates. And the rule we want to capture is if both inputs are false, then set the output to false. Otherwise, set output to true. That's our IF test. And this is just an IF structure way of phrasing that same behavioral rule we just said up there. There's no difference between the two. Just one happens to be in a structure that's easy to implement in the context of the Arduino software control structures. We're still, after we get that test, we're still going to want to display the output to the user, the gate output, and we're still going to want to ask them, do they want to play again? Given that we're using the exact same design or program sketch that we used in the AND software implementation or the software implementation of an AND gate, then we can really just take that same AND gate program and just update a few lines of code. Resave it, rename it as an OR gate program, 
test it, make sure it works, and we'll be done. To do that, our very first update would be, well, to the title. In the very first part of it, remember, our program will begin below this line. The title will be OR gate program. The date's still fine. We're still not using any pinch. And the description needs to be updated. And I had a typo in the description. I noticed it in the previous video. That should be an M. What this program does is it's a simple software and serial monitor implementation of, well, OR gate behavior. So, done. Our global variables are still fine. Comments are still fine. In our function prototypes, instead of having void and gate function, we'll need void or gate function. <clears throat> In setup, serial begin, that's fine. Serial print, instead of welcoming users to the and gate program, we'll need to welcome them to the or gate program. No line setting, everything stays the same. In setup, inside void loop, we're still going to need this if program stops false, basically controlling whether void loop repeats or not. We need that. Enter the first truth value. Still the same. Nothing's going to change. Input one. The, the get input data is still going to be assigned over to input one. Nothing's changing there. We're still going to give the user feedback in terms of what they entered, whether they entered a T or an F. We're going to have True or false is still going to appear after that equal sign. Collecting the second truth value is going to be no different than the first. We won't need to change anything. At this point, we've reached where we make that call to our gate function. And so we've updated our function prototype, we'll need to update our function call. This will be the OR gate function that will be called here. Moving along. Do you want to play again? The get input being assigned to that ch, that character global variable, that'll stay the same. Serial printing that character stays the same. All the play again structure stays exactly the same. And notice we've already reached the end of void loop. Pretty speedy. Once you have a functioning logic gate program, it normally takes just a little modification and you can have a program for any other gate you want. We're at the get input function. Nothing will change here. Like final modification, we've modified it everywhere else in the code. Instead of and gate function, we need or gate function as the name of our function. We're still going to collect those global character input one and two. But where the magic happens, this is the key modification we have to make. All the other stuff is cosmetic. The program wouldn't function if we didn't change those things. Or it would be printing the wrong stuff to the screen. And if we didn't change this everywhere consistency, the compiler would yell at us. But ultimately what will make this an OR gate program rather than an AND gate or any other kind of gate program is what we do on that line. This is where we need that IF test for OR behavior. And recall, an OR gate's output is false whenever both of its inputs are false. Otherwise, it's true. And that's the core that we have to realize. So if the first input is the character F, the user input's false, and the second input entered by the user is a character F or false, then what's going to happen? or gate output should be false. Otherwise, the or gate or gate output should be true. And that's it. That one modification to that test and modifying which output condition is displayed is all we need. We have successfully taken an AND gate program or a software implementation of AND gate behavior and converted it to OR gate behavior. But we don't know just yet. We need to upload the code 
and test it. We're not receiving any compiler errors. It's a good sign. There's a hope we've made all the necessary corrections. We just need to click on the serial monitor and test our program. Welcome to the OR gate program. Select no line ending setting. It's on no line. Enter the first truth value. Enter T for true, F for false. So let's test the that key aspect of OR gate behavior first. Enter input one will be a false. Input two false. The OR gate output should be false. OR gate output is false. It should be that, and it is. Do we want to play again? Yes, we need to test the other three possibilities. Okay, let's play again. The program's restarted. Enter the first truth value. Well, the OR gate output should be true just as long as at least one of its inputs is true. So we can enter a true for the first input. Enter a false for the second one. The output should be true, and it is. Do we want to play again? Yes. Enter the first truth value. So let's vary it. Instead of true, we'll say false for the first input, true for the second input. The output of the OR gate should be true. It is. All that we have remaining is the final possibility. We've restarted it. Enter the first truth value. First input is true. Second input is true. The OR gate output should be true. And it is. We've successfully converted our previous AND gate program into an OR gate program. You can use this program and it will function as an OR gate every time. I'll hover here in case people want to copy those modifications or make the changes in their own code. There's the OR gate function. The only modifications that were made is to that first line, the test, the output strings, and the name. Get input stayed exactly the same as it did with the AND program. The play again structure stayed exactly the same. No changes were made to play again. We changed the name from AND gate to OR gate function here in the function call. Collecting user inputs stayed the same. Nothing changed in this section. Program stop, void loop. All that was the same. We changed welcome to the OR gate program. Instead of welcome to the AND gate, it's welcome to the OR gate. And in our function prototype, we changed AND gate function to OR gate function. And in our title, we changed it from AND gate program to OR gate program. And we updated our program sketch to reflect the behavior rule associated with OR gates rather than AND gates. Hope this tutorial was helpful. I look forward to creating the next one. If you like this video and like this series, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.